Welcome in everyone to the first episode of my OOTP San Francisco Giants playthrough. We are starting up here in 2022. Date is March 9th, 2022. And um, I've made some changes to, well, I haven't made any changes, but I've pretty much configured all the rosters already because all this stuff takes a lot of time and I like to be really tedious about it. So um, everyone's kind of where they should be at this point. Uh for some reason, OTP 23. I don't know. Remember if they did this last year. I've been playing since 20, or sorry, OTP 14, I believe. So, um, so I'm pretty well versed in this game. I, I I love this game. I've spent way too many hours, hundreds of hours playing this. Um, so I I haven't noticed in any other games that the minor league rosters are filled up so much, but. And this one it is, so I kind of move guys around. I know the draft's going to happen. These rookie leagues don't happen until after the draft. So so I'm not really too concerned about those. But um, my pitching staffs are all pretty much cleared, like filled up with AAA is not as bad because I like to have those guys actually get experience. But high A, single A, these, these rosters are filled up with a lot of pitchers. Pretty much whoever my manager wants to pitch, that's who's going to pitch. And if those guys play well, they'll get called up. If not... We'll, uh, we'll play from there, but uh, I try to keep, you know, keep this realistic as possible for my playthroughs. I'm not going to go make any crazy trades. I'll show you my settings that I work with when I play. So, biggest change here is overall ratings. I do 20 to 80 increments of 5. I think that's the most realistic. A lot of people like to do 1 to 100. Some people like to do 20 to 80 without increments of 5. I get it, but... Firstly, this is what I play with. So, um, and then I also do GM controllers, always in control of lineups. I have a manager, but I like to control the lineups and everything, the day-to-day -day stuff. So, I'm technically only the general manager, but I also am effectively the manager. But I like to have the manager in the in the dugout and have his impact there as well. Uh, the only thing I changed here is show personality ratings. I changed the batter aging speed just down a tick, and the pitcher as well, down to .95. Not really a big deal, but I do notice in these games they the batters tend to fall off a cliff very quickly, which in a lot of cases is true, but other times is not. I noticed this was a new feature this year. Free agents wear suits. I like it, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I also disabled baseball cards for obvious reasons for anyone who's played this game. It doesn't like loading screens. This changed a little bit. Oops. This should be 35, 15, 10. 35, 15, 10. Wow. Okay. So I play, I think it's just two ticks above medium for difficulty. The difficulty has gotten much harder as these games have evolved over time. So so I do two ticks above. I think this is a fair, fair place. Uh, also, I used to do heavy favor prospects, but again, I guess I could do a tick maybe for the, for the AI preferences, but uh, that's about it. Lineup selection, I do traditional. Last second um, are the last things that I want to go through. I turned off the modified extra innings. I hate that rule. I hope they get rid of it in real life because I'm tired of it. Uh, I do have the three batter minimum. It's fine. Whatever. I think it adds some strategy into the game. Expanded roster size, 30 people. Um, I think the 28 is fine. I think it's better than 40, but I think having those two extra guys... Is cool just because I like to have my minor leaguers. You know, these guys come up and try to prove themselves late in the year. Besides that, uh, I don't allow trading, no draft pick trading. I think it's cheesy. I've seen guys get traded for nothing because they have a small injury. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't allow the trading players. It's cheesy and draft pick trading. Maybe I'd add that in eventually, but not right now at this point. Uh, and then just rename the awards, keep all this stuff on, but if something stupid happens and I'll change that, but uh, all this stuff is default. I've tried, I've gone up to 60 players. I've used no hard cap. Honestly, the system they have set up is pretty good here. So I run with that. And then I think it's about it. Yeah. I don't change anything on here. Really. Sometimes I force them to have 13 position players, but I'm going to, I'm going to roll with this. So Finally, let's get into the team here. So, our pitching staff. I love this pitching staff, personally. Logan Webb, he's going to be my opening day starter. I would go with Carlos Rodon, but the baseball fan and me, the guy who's been here longer, 
gets to have the opening day start for me. So Logan Webb will be my opening day starter. Excellent pitcher. Nothing else to say there. Carlos Rodon, same story. He's on a one-year deal. Uh, he's got the player opt-out. Not sure if he takes that very often. I've been playing this really long-term save with the Padres, so I haven't played a ton of new games in this in this version of the game. So I'm not sure if he takes the opt-out or what. I, mean, I assume he will if he has a really good year. So, But that's someone we could look to lock up long-term. He does have a normal health status, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, I have Descalfani as my third starter. Um, I could put Wood there, but Descalfani had a great year last year, under contract for three more years until his age 34 season, so we'll see how that ages, but he's a nice pitcher. Alex Wood, not injury prone, surprisingly, uh, also had a very good year last year. Three-pitch pitcher, you'll come to see. I do not like three-pitch pitchers. I think they're way too volatile as starters. I'll only usually go for four pitch guys to be starters, but he's extreme ground, ground ball. This makeup of stuff, movement, control doesn't usually play great, especially with the three pitches. So the low movement, especially with the three pitches, for some reason these guys always they're extremely volatile. So something to look out for. And then Alex Cobb, honestly, a fine fifth starter. Again, the three pitches, whatever. Like this guy's probably gonna give me a four and a half ERA. Maybe in San Francisco that goes down to like a 4-2, but but overall, not a bad pitcher. Bullpen, this bullpen, I was going through making these roster decisions, and this was incredibly tough. There's no like stud in here besides maybe a Camilio Duval, but Camilio Duval, I'll have to get that down. But uh, I have Jake McGee's my closer. He was the closer last year for San Francisco, did a great job. The ratings are not really there, but he'll he'll be the year, he'll start the year as my closer. We'll see what happens. Duvall right now will be my setup guy. Mostly he'll be my high leverage guy, so kind of like my, what do I like to call it? My fireman, kind of. He comes in and gets out of jams. So he'll be the fireman, but he's technically my setup guy in the eighth. Tyler Rogers, when I started up the save, he was in the minors, but I really, I, I like this this pitch, pitch mix. He's not going to strike anyone out. He'll probably be down to like six Ks per nine, but the movement control... Sinker baller. I like that. So he'll definitely be up in the majors for me. We'll see what happens with him. Jose Alvarez, tweener guy. This is like one of those ground ballers who won't strike many guys out but could have good results. So we'll see what happens there. Could be a trade candidate if we if we wind up needing a roster spot or something. He'll probably be the first guy to go. But I like having the lefty in there. Dominic Leone had a fantastic season for San Francisco. Really good pitcher. Uh, got wipeout stuff, so we'll see what happens with him. Uh, he is a free agent after the season. Zach Littell, I believe that's pronounced, it's pronounced. Also had a great year for San Francisco. He'll be in the bullpen f- to start the year. Uh, we have Jarlin Garcia, nice pitcher. Nothing else to say there. Another bubble guy if things get things get rough. Anyway, John Brebbia, excellent pitcher. Step with his rating wise, at least. Uh, but didn't have a good year last year, so we'll see what happens with him as well. I feel like I'm going to say that with a lot of people because this roster could have a lot of turnover. All right, and then uh, our lineups here. I, I don't like this overview tab, by the way, but whatever. Th- this is also the the screen I like to use. I'm still playing with it for this year's version. We'll see. Um, I had a really good one. My last computer broke, so I lost that. So... Um, that's why this is still a work in progress. You might see a change over the course of the series. But at catcher, we have Joey Bart. Don't love him. I love the the personality. He actually checks every box that I would look for, which is really cool. But the catcher ability is not that high. The arm's not even that high, But and the bat's fine. Uh, I, hope, I hope he sticks around. Maybe he can improve. He's only 25, so. So that, that's, that's a... Sign for optimism, but we'll see. We'll see with him. Kirk Casale, really fine backup. Excellent personality traits. Yeah, I like him as a backup. That's fine. Brandon Belt, first baseman. Excellent player. Going to get on base. He'll be batting third and fourth, I believe, in my two lineups. So he's batting batting fourth against righties and third against lefties, just because I wanted to split these guys up. But we'll get into the lineup a little bit after in my construction of that. 
Darren Ruff, platoon guy. He'll be playing mostly against lefties, but against righties quite a bit because this lineup's a little bit hurt right now, as you'll see. We'll get into the injuries. Tyro Estrada, my starting second baseman. Mostly not by my choice, but we have no one else to play. He's he's a fine player. Like This guy's definitely a utility guy. I, I like it. He can play the outfield as well, which is really cool. At least the corners. Wilmer Flores, not really a third baseman, but he'll be starting at third against the lefties and at DH against the righties. Uh, Brandon Crawford, this is this is a great profile for my shortstop. I wish his defense is a little better, but that's fine. He'll 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 play. He'll play. Jock Peterson will not be playing against lefties, but he's a righty smasher, as you can see. But his ratings are almost unplayable against lefties. Go over Luke Williams is my utility guy right now. Also, I like to have faces for all these guys. Really OCD thing, but. That looks like a fine face for Luke Williams. Got some wheels off the bench. Can hit a little bit. He's a righty. Can play every position. Cool with me. Mauricio Dubon. Technically listed as a center fielder. He's going to be starting at third base, actually, against left or righties, I think. Uh, these ratings will play at third. Got the 60 arm. Not ideal, but it'll, it'll play over there. So we're going to get him a little time at third. Doesn't have any experience over there, so we'll see. How bad is defensive ratings tank? Steven Duggar, our starter in center field against righties. Crushes righties, not so much against lefties. However, we have the perfect complement in Austin Slater. He'll be our center fielder against lefties. Not really the range. I usually look for a 70, but the 65, will, uh, that'll play a little bit. Against lefties, really solid. Also play a little infield if we need him, too. And Mikey Shremsky, he'll be playing right field against everyone hopefully we'll see how uh, how he plays i don't love this this batter profile for him i mean the the low contact the medium like 60 power is really good like he'll be a 25 home run guy but i don't know this 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 profile usually doesn't tend to age well and he's 30 almost 32 and doesn't seem to get results very often in these games so he's definitely not a long he could be a long-term piece, but I'm not locking him into any spot right now. Um, and then I have all the farm system set up, but let's go through some of the top prospects. First of all, we have no money, which is tough. But <laughs> the salaries, I mean, we have a lot of money coming off the books next year. Longoria probably won't keep that team option. Belt's off the books. Peterson's off the books. Boyd, Flores... Uh, really, the only guys that I'm looking to keep, I would want to re-sign Rodon if we can. McGee could be a free agent. Ruff, there, God, there's no way I pay him $9 million, no matter how good he is. Yastrzemski could be a trade candidate if we want to free up some roster or uh, free up some budget room. Jacob Junis, this is a... I did not realize I traded for him. He's making 1.7 mil. A little high. A little high for my liking, but that's 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 fine. He can... He'll probably be up at some point. I mean, he's got the starter stamina. This this isn't a horrible... It's not a horrible pitcher here. He could be up, but my bullpen was stacked, so... Um, and then let's go to player development really quick. Check out our prospects. We have Marco Luciano listed as a left fielder. I'm actually probably going to play him in left field because you know, this is probably an easier way to see this. I would love to play him at third. He, he could fake it at third, I think. But de defensive position doesn't really matter, but he's only maxed out at a 50 here. I don't know. The 60 arm kind of scares me. I'll play him a lot at third. I think he's going to but I think he's gonna play a lot of outfield for me in the minors. At least get the corners down. That way, when he comes up, he has some positional flexibility. He's in high A. He'll start the year up there. He played a little bit last year. Hopefully, hopefully he comes along and... Uh, we can see some results from him. We have Luis Matos, who will start in the year in high A. Really exciting player here. The low I, this I, the 40, it, it it's fine. Um, but if all this stuff comes along, then, man, this is a quite the player here. He's actually pretty far along. He could probably play in AAA right now. Um, let's check out his ratings relative to, I think we're in the Pacific Coast League. No, we're in the Northwest League. Interesting. Oh, wait, this is duh. definitely in the Pacific Coast League. So, yeah, I mean, he yeah, he could play in AAA right now. But I'm going to take it slow with him. He's only 20. No need to rush. 
Kyle Harrison. This is a nice pitcher. Three pitch kind of scares me, but at least his changeup is well developed, and that could be a an out pitch for him. The curveball is cool. Uh, I mean, probably not the pitcher he is in real life, where he's an absolute stud for the Giants. We'll see with him. Elliot Ramos, going to start the year in AAA. Really nice player. He actually, oh, he didn't get a cup of coffee last year. I lied. He's only tw not even 23 up. I think he'd be a really nice player. Probably make an impact on the Major League roster this year. Ryan Murphy, this is a nice pitcher. Four pitches. Really cool. Yeah, he'll start the year at AA. Uh, Patrick Bailey, nice pitcher. Or nice pitcher, nice catcher. Doesn't really have the ability, but, I mean, if this bat comes along, I'll find somewhere for him. Doesn't really play any other positions. I guess he could play a little first, but that bat's not a first base. Uh, first base caliber. Mikulski, I believe it's pronounced. He'll start the year in high or in regular A, low A. Three pitch mix. This is probably a reliever in the future for me. I, I couldn't see this guy being a starter, but he's pretty far along. Honestly, he could he could pitch in AAA easily. Uh, we'll go through two more guys in the top two hundred. Our batch. He'll start the year in Double A as well, along with Patrick Bailey. This guy's not gonna be a catcher for me. Fifty the fifty ability, that's that's below what I want it to be at. But he can play some outfield. He can play some infield. Not ideal infielder, but he could definitely play some corner outfield. This guy could be like a really good utility guy. Like this would be the perfect, perfect thirteen guy. thirteenth guy off the bench. A guy who can catch a little bit in a pinch, like if I need to pinch hit for my catcher late in the game. This guy can come in and catch for a little bit, a couple of innings. Play some outfield, he can play some infield, like perfect 13th guy there. Very excited for him. And then Artegia. Artegia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Interesting name there. Uh, he'll be in rookie ball. I don't know. He starts a year in high or uh, regular A. Probably a second baseman in the future, but a long way to go. Could be a decent player here. He's actually right at the 200th mark, so. There's some other interesting players down here. Gregory Santos got a cup of coffee in the majors last year. This guy could be a stud reliever for me. I, I don't think I'd use him as a starter, but yeah, that's I mean that's his relief ratings. That's a, that's a really good player. So I honestly might just put him as a reliever now, but let's try to work him out as a starter. Maybe maybe something happens. I mean, he only has a 35 stamina, so this is definitely a reliever, honestly. Extreme ground ball, ninety eight to hundred. That's an exciting player there. He could he's del he'll definitely be up in the majors this year. But he he starts the year at double A here. Uh anyone else who sticks out? Kevin Casher. This guy was like hidden down in like high A or something for me. Really excellent reliever. He'll be in triple A. He can make an impact in the majors this year. Uh and that's about all everyone I'd want to go through for this. So So we're back. Opening day is today. And a couple minor minor trades that we made. Let's go to um, first of all. Let's go through the top 100 prospects. No, none of my players here, but this is what it looks like. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, nothing crazy going on there. So we made this minor trade. I'd say that's not us. Here we are. Uh, we want a flipping Corey Oswalt, who was DFA'd off my roster because he was up there and he had he was out of options. Uh, actually, a pretty nice pitcher. I was he was my last guy to cut. So I mean, this is a long reliever, like not bad, solid player. I can see what Minnesota sees in him, and we get back Nick Gordon, who um, I like the the personality class spark plug. Also has a good personality. Um, mostly, this is to have a left-handed bat in the infield, so he can play. Uh, I play him all around the infield. I mean, third base is a stretch, but he could play shortstop in a pinch, more of a second baseman. Uh, but he can definitely play the outfield. He can play the corners really, really well. He can, play, he can fake it in center for a little bit. So, yeah, so we just flipped those two. Nick Gordon now slots in against righties as my nine hitter and third baseman. Could put Estrada there, but I like Estrada at second. So Gordon will be my third baseman uh, tomorrow. Actually, no, he won't because we're playing a lefty. This will be our lineup where... Oops, Nick Gordon will, will back up these positions. And, uh, and yeah, so I just want to update on that. Opening day roster is all set. So it, I didn't realize it's four weeks <laughs> from, the, from the start of the save 
which was March 9th, I think I started on. Uh, Lamont Wade and Tommy Asola are coming back tomorrow on opening day. They're going to do a little rehab assignment because I already took all the time to set up these rosters. I'm not putting these guys in right now. They can spend a couple weeks down there getting ready for the year. Here they are. So I'm going to send them on a rehab assignment. So they will head down to AAA for now. Okay, let's sim through opening day here. And um, we lose 8-2. to two. So Logan Webb gets roughed up a little. Zach Littell and Jalen Garcia pitch out of the pen. They pitch fine, I guess. Whatever. Uh, it's just opening day, so it's not a big deal. Uh, looks like our offense was... Let's see. Looks like we had a Darren Ruff single... And, uh, and, yeah, so I'm going to sim a couple weeks. We'll come back to – we'll see what's happening. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. It is April 23rd. We're 14 games into the season. We're running a 7-7 seven seven record. We got swept in three games by the Mets, which kind of destroyed that. Um, besides that, we've been pr a pretty good team. Do have a few minor transactions we made. Well, depending on how you feel about Mauricio Dubon. So we wound up flipping him. I had a roster crunch. Tom Stella was coming back, and he was crushing AAA, so he was ready to come back. So I, I had this ros roster crunch where it was either going to be him or Nick Gordon on their way out. Nick Gordon was one of my few guys actually hitting well, um, maybe inflated by this 370 or 357 Babbitt, but uh, he, he was learning to play third base. He was hitting a little bit, so so I wanted to keep him. Mauricio Dubon, on the other hand, was not hitting. He was only 27 at-bats. But, I mean, he's 27 out of options. Someone had to go, and he was the one. But I wound up getting a pretty good return for him. As you can see here, I also got rid of Keaton Wynn, who was a 24-year-old in high A. Had gotten one appearance. But that's pretty much like a, a guy I'm fine giving up with. In return, we got TJ Sekema who is a former first-round pick in 2019 by the New York Yankees. 23 years old, four-pitch guy. Uh, this guy could be a, probably a decent long man or maybe a fifth starter if he develops a little bit more. Only had two appearances down in AA this year. So we got him, and more importantly, we got $4 million cash. That was pretty much for throwing in Keaton win. I was offered Dubon for Sakema, I think, and then I wound up trying to get some cash from them because I'm out of money. And uh, I gave Keaton win for $4 million, basically. So pretty good trade. I understand it from the Yankees' point of view. Dubon's a pretty good player. Got some untapped potential there. He's a 27-year-old. So uh, the one other thing I wanted to go through was my – shoot. Where is this? Uh – the breakdown, oh, the breakdown of my scouting. So, for opening day, I couldn't, ch I didn't want to change his number because I know if you change this, it goes down to the the default, um, the maximum you can, or the minimum, the maximum you could have with your budget space. So, I wasn't going to touch this number. We're stuck at fifteen for this year for the scouting budget. I started dump, I'm dumping money into international and amateur scouting. I feel confident in my ability to scout the majors. So. I have a little bit of scouting budget allocated there, but not much. And uh, minor league scouting, I have quite a bit too, but mostly amateur and uh, international for this year. We have the last pick in the draft, I believe, because we had the best record in the MLB last year. So definitely going to need to uh, to scout well in amateurs and get some international guys, hopefully. Um, so far, performances, performance-wise, everyone's getting quite a few at-bats. Listella just came back. I just uh, made that trade and put him on the roster. But everyone's uh, everyone's gotten some at-bats, so we'll look through how everyone is. Uh, Ruff has been my best player so far. Uh, he's not hitting lefties, surprisingly, and hitting righties pretty well. So it's interesting for my platoon guy. I guess that'll even out over the course of a season. Um, Crawford's been my only guy who's really put up any war besides Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski. God, I hate saying that name. Uh, he's batting 320, 160 WRT+. Plus. If you could put this up through the whole year, damn, I'd be happy with that. Yastrzemski, um, 
not the average is not there, but the OBP and the OPS is there. Three homers, 13, um, 13% walk percentage there, and a low BAB. So uh, 0.7 war. He's my second best guy according to war. Ruff would be third. Bart's hit pretty well. I'll take 120 WRC plus from my catcher any day. Uh, Belt's been solid. Slater has not. So my outfield's been a big problem out here. Oh, I should explain. Also, the Jock Peterson got hurt for three weeks with concussion. I think it was five weeks at the time, but I've seen a couple weeks. So uh, he only played four games. Didn't do much. But. My outfield hasn't really given me much production. Lamont Wade's been back for a little bit. He only played four games on AAA before uh, Peterson got hurt, so I called him up. He was actually in double A, sorry. Uh, he hasn't done anything in 31 at bats. Duggar hasn't done anything in 42 at bats. And Slater has done nothing also in only 15 at bats because he's only playing against lefties mostly. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, actually give Slater a little bit more time against righties. Um, in the in center and in left, so we'll see what he can do with a little more playing time. Only because he's not really playing much, and I mean Austin Slater's a solid player, so we'll see how he does there. But uh, I just want to cut in for those few things, and uh, we'll be back in a couple weeks probably. All right, we are back for a little update here. We are fifteen and thirteen. Uh, I think we have another two weeks or so to get to this point. So overall, looking at our team, our offense has been putrid, but our pitching has been great, led by our starting rotation. Disclavani, I know the 508 ERA doesn't look great, but his last three starts have been very good. So uh, it was really just these, this really just this one blow up that really killed him, but uh, not, not too bad of a start for us. Um, but we do have some injuries to talk about. First one that happened was Brandon Crawford went out for four weeks, I think it was at the time, maybe three weeks. He was our best hitter. So that stung. We've been filling in with Nick Gordon and Tyro Estrada in a little platoon there. I'll get to the lineup after and what, they, what they've what they been doing, and also the bullpen because I didn't go over them last time. Uh, then Austin Slater just got hurt. He's down um, for three to four weeks. Uh, he wasn't doing much, but still a good defender that I had to replace on this team. So let's go to what we did to fill those slots. I called the backup Evan Longoria from his rehab assignment. Really good timing. So he's he's come in. Uh, he wasn't doing too well down in the, on his rehab assignment, but he slots in as our three-hitter against righties by default pretty much. And then he'll back clean up against lefties. Uh, we call up Luke Williams to replace um, Austin Slater on the roster. He's going to be splitting time in center field against lefties with Duggar, and he'll back up the outfield against righties. Uh, I, I was going to start him against in center field against lefties, but I, I think I'll give Duggar a little chance here. He's he's hit for power, so uh, maybe he could translate that, but he has struck up 35% of the time, which is not good. Uh, the rotation's been fantastic. Webb's been really good. Rodon's been awesome. Disclafani, we already talked about him. He's coming back. And then Wood's been great, and Cobb has been great. So, no complaints here. I do have these guys on a pitch limit. I, I added this in right after opening day. Basically protecting my investment here. I have a lot of money wrapped up in Disclafani, Wood, and even Cobb to some extent for uh, for another year or so. You know what, I'm actually going to bump up Cobbs a little bit. I'll keep Wood and Discofani for now, because they're a little more injury prone. I guess Cobb is as well, but um, out of the bullpen, McGee's been, been really good in the closer role. He's not going anywhere. Duvall's been awesome in this uh, this kind of fireman role. I don't know how they're using him in-game, but uh, it's good enough. Tyler Rogers, for some reason, has been like <laughs> pitching a lot of innings, which is weird, but I'm not really opposed to it. He's been he's been really good in the time he's been used. So he's down at only five strikeouts per nine, which is what I expected. So uh, Jose Alvarez has been the really only rough pitcher, but he's only pitched three times. So I mean, nothing you can really say about that. Leon's been awesome. Latell's been good. Uh, you see the two ERA. I would say that's really good, but his FIP is almost at six, mostly due to this 
this really rough uh, triple slash line or triple pitch line, I guess you'd call it. But he has time to recover. Just got to get those home runs down pretty much. Uh, Jarlin Garcia also had a rough year so far. Uh, maybe he can recover. These lefties really haven't done much for me, but uh, John Brebby has been solid, I guess, as our like last guy in the pen. Let's go to the top prospects and see how these other guys are doing. Marco Luciano hit really, really well in high A so far. He got a, he got some time last year, so he'll probably be one of the first guys I move up. And his ratings are coming along. He got a nice update or a nice ratings boost in the last scout report we got. Uh, he was starting the year at third base. Fielding stats weren't too great, so I moved him to the outfield. He's only got three games out there, but we'll see how he does there. Luis Matos, his teammate down there. He got off to a rough start. Definitely heating up now, so that's good to see. He could definitely be a guy on the rise, too. Kyle Harrison, he had a little... Yeah, okay, so he had the oblique strain. Only pitched in two games. Nothing really to report there. Elliot Ramos, who's in AAA, hit pretty well. Well, looks like he hit pretty well, but I guess the, um, the run environment in the Pacific Coast League is too high, so his actual stats aren't too good. Ryan Murphy, we talked about him. Mikulski, this is a guy who a lot of teams were interested in when I was just playing around with trades. He's pitched pretty damn well down in, down in single A, so he could be a guy coming up soon. Or up the system, I should say. Uh, Patrick Bailey's been awesome down in single A, or double A, sorry. And uh, his teammate, Ocker Bosch, who's been playing all around the field. Really cool to see. He actually played in center field quite a bit. Wow. It hasn't been bad. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be his role when he comes up, I assume. Kind of like that utility guy, that 13th guy off the bench. Um, yeah, he's been awesome, so... A lot of stuff to look out for. Looks like Ortega fell out of the top 200. He's been really solid down there in single A, though. So not really too concerned about that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to cut the episode right here. Thank you for watching Episode 1 of the Out of the Park Baseball New York Giants playthrough. We'll uh, see you in Episode 2. Peace.